whatever it takes. For a country whose history is so scarred with racism, and whose DNA is so inextricably linked with racism, and for my own personal history, Libertyville, Illinois, when I was 13 years old, one day I was going to school, I opened my the family's garage door, and the Ku Klux Klan had hung a noose in my family's garage up in Libertyville. And, you know, it's, I, I never thought in my lifetime that I would see a uh, somewhat progressive African American elected to the highest office in the land. I think it's a huge that um, there's an area where he should he should begin. I mean, aside from the obvious, people are talking about the economy, it's getting out of control, but really, where should he begin in addition to that? If you asked me, I'd start the War Crimes Tribunal on mm -hmm. the day after the inauguration, mm -hmm. just to say this has been so not right, you know, from the uh, economic crimes at home, uh, from the corporate crime, mm -hmm. to the rolling, from basically the shredding of the, you know, the president wiping his fanny with the Constitution to uh, using, you know, uh, unapologetically using torture and secret prisons abroad, like, and, and first strike aggression against foreign nations. These are war crimes, according to the Geneva Conventions. You know. um, I, would, I, would, um, I would begin with a vigorous prosecution to clean the slates and uh, start a new. One of the things that's come to my attention over the course of the last year, unfortunately, is that they use music to torture the prisoners in Guantanamo Bay for like sleep deprivation. And one of the bands that they use, unfortunately, is Rage Against the Machine. But we've tried, we've, we've tried to sue, sue the State Department. It's, it's hard to stop. But anyway, that's unfortunately a fact. Um, so my, my suggestion is this. So close down Guantanamo Bay, but keep one small cell open. And on that day, after the War Crimes Tribunal, let's put George W. Bush in there, Condoleezza Rice, Dick Cheney, Donald Rumsfeld, put him in those nice little orange jumpsuits, black hoods over the head, lock the door, throw away the key, and crank rage against the machine 24 hours a day. That's what I call victory in the war on terror. How do you think things would have gone if McCain-Palin had been elected. Well, I was expecting it. I mean, there's no, there, there is no basement. I mean, the fact that the fact that George W. was elected twice, there is no basement. Mm -hmm. I mean, I really felt in this election, America was going to get the president it deserved. But what's different about him? What, there's almost a mysticism. What, what is it about him? Well, Why is the, he I'd so... I'd say on the one hand, the bar is, has been pretty low. Yeah. I mean, the bar has been very, okay. very, very low. Right. And right. Even, even given the fact that we've had the worst presidential administration in the history of the republic, mm -hmm. um, two horrendous wars, an economy in the toilet, mm -hmm. the Republicans still got 48 plus percent of the vote. Right. I, I would imagine that in a sane country, you could run a barnyard animal against a Republican and have it be 90-10. Mm -hmm. So I think that I wouldn't be patting ourselves on the back too much about that. If you have anything to thank George W. Bush for, it's for that, his prideful meanness and ignorance that slapped our own country in the face to allow there to be the possibility of something new. So. One of the things that really struck me that you were talking about tonight was the involvement that, that you expect and that you want and that you hope for from everybody else, from the rest of us, yeah. to, to, to yeah. echo what he's asking gotcha. of us. I would, I, would say, I would say, first of all, to, to not be swept up in the, in the euphoria and that the real concrete things that we would like and need done, that sort of change always comes from below never from above. Mm -hmm. And you can't just cast your ballot into the void every four years, cross your fingers, and hope for the best. On the other hand, there are plenty of democratic administrations that have committed economic crimes at home and war crimes abroad. So for those of us who believe in human rights and social and economic justice and peace and a sane environmental policy, we have to organize and struggle just as hard as ever, if not more so, to make to continue to shape this country and this world in the like to see and we'd like for us and our children to inhabit. You can't run for president of this country and not be in favor of some war. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't say all that shit in the Middle East is, mm -hmm. it, all that stuff in the Middle East is, uh, is, uh, you know, is, is ridiculous. And, you know, there, I thought there was a tremendous amount of red state pandering. And even, even in these initial days in office, mm -hmm. he's moved dramatically towards the center mm -hmm. and sort of, you know, it's, it's you know, Clinton light so far, you know, uh, what we've seen. We'll see, again, we'll see how that, the, the fact that the fact that he, 
you know, wants a dog from a shelter to me seems more, perhaps more significant than some of the cabinet appointments, because I don't know that we ever had a president that that was important to. And that maybe speaks to a set of kind of, of, of ethical standards. And on the streets of Chicago, they know my name.